previously on Great Chocolate Showdown. So pretty. The six home bakers teamed up to make a meringue masterpiece. Looks like a traffic cone. Allie and Kristen's meringue tower was a showstopper. Your rainbow candy shop was a technicolor triumph. In the elimination challenge, the bakers went international. At Zuki Beans. And a sweet message from home gave Ashley inspiration. I want to make my daughter so proud of me. And her first victory. I'm so excited. Leaving Emma and Allie facing elimination. I might be going home today. But ultimately, Allie's chocolate sumac. I wanted more sumac. And she was sent home. The final five get fired up. Light. As the competition gets more intense. I can smell something burning. I thought that I would be going home week one, two, three, but so beyond proud of myself. Final five, baby. Hello, Bakers. Hello. Hi. It's so hard to believe that only five of you remain on this baking adventure. Each of you has shown us proof, but we need to see more. Can you rise to the occasion? It's time for your next technique test. Bakers, I'm going to teach you one of life's and baking's great skills, making bread. I'm going to share some of my chocolate bread making tips and teach you how to shape and braid your bread into an eye-catching labor of loaf. I mean, love. <laughs> I'm very excited to make chocolate bread. I never made it before, so this should be interesting. I've already measured my to my mixer. To turn this into a chocolate dough, all it simply takes is the addition of Dutch processed cocoa. I'm adding yeast. To give your bread dough a nice tender texture and a very thin crust, we're going to use whole milk powder, a touch of sugar. Of course, bread dough recipes do require salt. Now for the liquids, my water, just above body temperature, a little bit of oil, and then the last ingredient, a single egg. Start on low speed to combine all the ingredients. Then you can increase the speed and you'll know when your dough is ready by the bowl. So now it's time to shape your dough before you let it rise. This is called booling. So what you want to do is flatten it out and then kind of tuck it all in, spin the dough around. And I'm pushing up one side, pulling down with the other. And so you have a ball that sits upright as opposed to flat. I have some bread dough. I've already let rest 20 minutes. Now it's time to shape the dough. Let's start off by making a braid. Create two ropes. Cross over each piece of bread. Alternate sides and tuck in the end pieces. And here you go, a gorgeous braided loaf. Anna Olsen, she does it so perfect. Here are my breads after 20 minutes of proofing. Add an egg wash. Bread loves a hot oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, from the oven, look at how that bread grows. Oh, you gotta love yeast. How do you know when your bread is done? Well, you can look at the even golden bread while it's hot. If you hear a hollow sound, that means your bread is nice and light and airy. Once you've given it a chance to cool, then it's ready to slice into. Look at that beautiful swirl Ooh. of the chocolate with the white dough. Oh, pillowy, delicious chocolate bread. Bakers, you've just been shown how to bake inviting and scrumptious chocolate bread. But we are not looking for your run-of-the-mill loaf. Whoa. <laughs> we want you to take us to a dessert deli. For your next technique test, we want the look of a classic sandwich, but transformed into a chocolate dessert. Give us the fillings, toppings, and sauces that we know and love in the savory world, but reimagined into something sweet. And bakers, the winner of this technique test will earn a special advantage in the upcoming challenge. You'll have to complete your dessert sandwiches. Ready, steady, get your sweet on. Let's get ready to crumble. Oops. See us. Ooh. Ooh.
Ooh, ooh, you okay? <laughs> Cynthia, Steve. This technique test is to take a savory sandwich and transform it into a dessert. It means being really imaginative and pulling out some decor techniques that at this far along in the competition, our bakers should have mastered. So the first thing our bakers need to do is get those doughs mixing because they need to let the doughs rise. Right now, I am making regular bread and chocolate bread at the same time. My bun is going to be a marble effect, and it's going to be very chocolatey. My grandmother, she's the expert on breads. I just haven't learned that from her yet, so we shall see how today goes. Not only are we making bread, we have to make something that looks savory, but tastes sweet on the inside. For this technique test, I'm making a chocolate fried chicken sandwich. So I'm gonna use short, they kinda look like chicken tenders. Fried chicken is a staple of the South, and I'm from the South. I'm gonna have white chocolate lettuce leaves, vanilla bean, pastry cream, special sauce, and then I'm gonna make a strawberry jelly, which is gonna be my tomato. This is gonna be so fun. You know, this is gonna be the base for my imposter chicken. <laughs> I am trying to make a marble effect bread, there is an advantage on the line, and I want this advantage. Okay, on to the next thing. I am making a chocolate shrimp po' boy sandwich with strawberry hot sauce. It's a staple. Be my shrimp. I'm making chocolate cake crumble to mold into shrimp. I need mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomatoes. I need to recreate a sandwich that looks real. It's rising. While this bread is proofing, they can then jump on to their ingredients that they're gonna put inside of the bread. I need you to rise. Mm. So now that I'm done rolling my dough for my hamburger bun, it's time for me to let it proof on the counter. I do love hamburgers. They are my favorite. When it comes to a good hamburger, there's always bacon involved. So I am making a chocolate cheeseburger with candy, but really simple to make. The only thing that you need is a little brown sugar, a little sugar, and a little maple syrup, and you in the game. All right. So now I can move on to my beef patties. Patties? I start off with the chocolate, peanut butter, and puff rice cereal. Look like a chocolate patty to me. Then I say, what goes with chocolate? Pretzels. I come up with the idea to make my onion rings out of pretzel crust. What goes with pretzels? The marshmallow tomato. I keep matching flavor on flavor on flavor because that's how you get the best flavor profiles. Smells good. I decided to put breakfast sandwich because breakfast is my favorite meal of the day and it's the most important. I think it's gonna be pretty yummy. So I'm thinking a chocolate croissant, a tempered white chocolate egg with a passion fruit bonbon egg yolk, a chocolate marshmallow sausage patty, and a morning mocha on the side. Okay, coming behind you, friend. One hour left, bakers, one hour. Come on, y'all. Get y'all braids in the oven. Okay. So my cake is already made. I'm just shaping my shrimp. For the outside of my shrimp, I'm mixing butter and gold chocolate because I want my shrimp to look great. I'm finished with my white chocolate cream cheese filling. Next, I work on tempering some white chocolates so I can make my red onion and dill garnishes. I'm gonna pour my white chocolate onto the cocoa butter and then scrape it. And then curve it and stick it in the fridge so that when it sets, it'll be nice rounds like an onion. Making a sunny side up egg out of tempered white chocolate. I'm gonna try and use as many techniques as I can think of to make sure my sandwich looks. Separate some of the white chocolate that I've tempered and create a bonbon for the yolk that I'm filling with a delicious passion fruit ganache. Girl, this meringue don't wanna be my friend today, baby. My Italian meringue buttercream is melting. It's flat and it's soup. It's juice. And Italian buttercream is thick like mayonnaise. It gives the mayonnaise effect. If I don't have mayonnaise on my po' boy sandwich, it's not gonna be a po' boy sandwich. Girl. I do not want to fail this technique test. This meringue. meringue don't want to be my friend today, baby. I have to restart my Italian meringue buttercream. If I don't have mayonnaise on my po' boy sandwich, it's not going to be a po' boy sandwich. Doing my Italian meringue buttercream over, because it did not do well. I have come so far in this competition from failing and bottom two, I cannot go back. I just have to keep rising to the top. It's OK. It's OK. 28.6. 
knead it to 27, then I can add it back in my bowl. For today's technique test, we have a dessert version of a classic sandwich. When I think of smoked salmon and cream cheese on a bagel, I obviously think of dill. So I'm making tempered white chocolate dill garnishes. I think this task turns on the ability to fool us visually into thinking as a savory dessert. We're asking our bakers to play make-believe here, to turn us into little kids again. <laughs> To make my temper white chocolate lettuce leaves, I color them green, add coconut shavings for texture, and then I smooth it on the meddling tray, just so I can have the roof. This is going to be my fried chicken coating. I'm going to use the white chocolate so that I can coat my meddlings and cereal. Stay at home, we put the chicken in a bag and shake it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Making a little hot sound. For this po' boy sandwich, I'm putting cayenne pepper in my strawberry coolie hot sauce. That's bringing a bit of the heat and flavor at the same time. Hot sauce. I love dipping sauces in general. I'm going to use a white chocolate ganache, but I'm going to color it three different ways. Ketchup, I'm going to leave a little bit to act as my mayo. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm going to make banana pudding from scratch, and I'm going to make it my cheese. I know that I've thrown everything at this hamburger, including the kitchen sink. This hamburger dessert is going to be so much fun. Everyone, we have 30 minutes left. Knock, knock. Our bakers have to get the bread onto a rack. Mm -hmm. Let's remember that a freshly baked bread can take longer to cool than a cake. Definitely. Ooh, they're a little toasty. I think these croissants look pretty good. <laughs> My chocolate marshmallow comes out perfectly. They're nice and fluffy and have a perfect circular shape. And with my cookie crumble glaze, these things may be marshmallows, but they sure do look like sausage patties to me. Bakers, you have 10 minutes left. Let's go. Time to speed it up now. What's some chocolate burger without banana pickles? Let's do this. Let's go. My little tomatoes. And this is looking like lettuce. So fun. OK, what am I having to do? Five minutes! Five minutes, bakers! Come on, bakers! Time's running out, and it's time for me to assemble the biggest, meatiest, yummiest, non-beef chocolate burger ever seen. I'd eat it. This is definitely starting to look like a realistic smoked salmon and cream cheese bagel. <laughs> we got it, we got it. Get those sandwiches plated. Mm, 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 mm. 10, I can't believe how realistic this burger looks. I had a picture in my head and it's right here in front of my face. Bakers, we asked you to make us chocolate bread and use it to create a dessert sandwich. The dessert deli is open for service. Mike, please bring us your dessert. I chose the most important meal of the day. I made a chocolate with a morning mocha. The melted cheese looks melted. <laughs> Good. Hilarious. The texture on the sausage patty with its glisten, it looks like it's warm. The shape of the egg, it's a bonbon, and not just a piece of tempered chocolate, I think is amazing. You've got a nice shine to your croissant. It's got good height when it comes to the proofing. Nicely done. Mike, the big fun thing about food play is your eye is seeing something tasting. Because you incorporated the marshmallow patty in there, you got that squishiness that is so reminiscent of a real croissant. It is delicious. And I think the passion fruit bonbon yolk gave it that freshness. Because there was so much dark chocolate in there, you got those bitter notes. You nailed the chocolate aspect. Mike, thank you so much. You can head back. Thank you. I am so proud of this breakfast sandwich. All of my hard work paid off. Kristen, please bring us your dessert plate. This is my chocolate fried chicken sandwich. 
your giant bun. And you got a beautiful round shape. And I saw you making your lettuce by so simply using your Madeleine pan, I think is genius. Look at that ruffle. In temper. Doesn't that always happen when you slice a sandwich? The lettuce falls out. <laughs> Look at that marbling. Just waves of chocolate and regular bread dough. Kristen, I'm gonna make this quick, so I got a plane to catch. I'm going to the deep south to see if anybody can make a fried chicken sandwich like this one. <laughs> Your chocolate madeleine, and it was moist and it was chocolatey, dipped in white chocolate and corn cereal crunch. It gave the effect of fried chicken. Nice work. Thank you. I'm a really good baker, but I never thought I'd be doing the things that I'm doing now. It's so amazing. Tim. I'm here with candy bacon. That is one messy burger. When I think of a hamburger, the more stuff on a hamburger, the better it is to me. Your bread is beautiful. The dripping white chocolate condiments tie everything together. Well done. Wow, we speak the same language when it comes to food because that's how I eat burgers. It was awesome. Two patties in that crunch. I absolutely love the crunch in it. And you nailed the chocolate in the actual burger itself. Well done. Thank you. Tim, that is garnished. I didn't care too much for the bananas, I'll be honest. Gherkins are usually a bit of an olivey green, and that was a bit of a luminous green. But you know flavors. Bacon, peanut butter, salt. Like, this burger had everything. Wow. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, judges. They could have lived without the pickles, but overall, my burger was amazing. This table is hungry. Order pickup on Ashley's sandwich. I made a chocolate shrimp po' boy sandwich with strawberry hot sauce. I get it. You left the gold chocolate tempered and plain. It's more of a battered shrimp as opposed to a breaded shrimp. This strawberry sauce, I love it. With shrimp without hot sauce. True. Your bread was baked beautifully. There is underproofing just at the top. The slight tearing happens, but good job. Ashley, nice work. Sandwiches, your shrimp, your chocolate sponge, it had a punch of gold chocolate that you actually coated that sponge in. I could eat that whole thing. Thank you. The Italian buttercream and the strawberry sauce, it was so perfectly balanced. It's just a, an afterburn. Really want to finish this. Thank you. My flavors and my ability to plate have caught up. They're holding hands now. It's time to order another sandwich. Emma, you're up. I made a smoked salmon bagel. This is amazing. The shine on the top of that bagel. I did the regular egg wash. OK. It looks like it was boiled in honey water and then baked in a wood-fired oven. You went through the effort of tempering chocolate to make dill. And I have to say, what really catches my eye, Emma, the onions. Emma, the flavor of this sandwich is phenomenal. Love balance, and you did execute the chocolate bread well. Emma, your tempered white chocolate onions, come on, a work of art. That white chocolate cream cheese filling, you nailed the chocolate. Good job. Thank you. It was such a fun challenge, honestly. I'm just really proud of myself. Bakers, congratulations. All of you really rose to the occasion in your chocolate bread technique test. For us, you're all. It was really hard to do, but we had to pick a favorite. There was one baker who served up a sandwich packed and stacked with incredible flavor. I could have eaten three. And that sandwich belongs to...
bakers. It was really hard to do, but we had to pick a favorite. And that sandwich belongs to Tim. <laughs> that burger had and was everything. It was the most delicious chocolatey deception. Well done, Tim. You've earned a special advantage in the upcoming challenge. Bakers, remember, all of you will be baking in the upcoming chocolate elimination challenge that will send one of you home. Popcorn, come get your popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Please grab one. Okay, are we watching a movie? Like, what's going on? Bakers, desserts can be romantic. They can make us laugh. They can be dramatic. And even cinematic. Hit the lights! <laughs> Coming soon to theaters near you. Oh, it's movie time now. In a world where the fight for dessert domination rules the galaxy, scrumptious will survive. Interstellar Sweets. Penny, Pete, and Pierre were three happy little pies with one dream. To fly pies in the sky. I want to go see that with my kids. When the world's most precious bonbon goes missing, there is only one woman to call. The Dessert Detective. Is the secret ingredient of love enough to make her stay or get whisked away? He's the fastest chocolatier in the West, ready to serve up some just desserts. The Tempered Trail, blazing into theaters this summer. Oh, snap. For your next chocolate elimination challenge, you must create a plated chocolate dessert inspired by an iconic film genre. To find out what type of film will be your inspiration, Kristen, please look at your movie ticket. I have musical. Emma. I have western. Films. Sapphire. I have mystery. Bakers, become directors of desserts by capturing the look and feel of your film genre. We want a delicious and chocolatey night at the movies. Tim, as the winner of the technique test, you get the option of trading your movie genre with a fellow baker. Looking around at all the movie genres, and I'm looking at my movie genre, I'm gonna stick with sci-fi. I love sci-fi movies. Unfortunately, with our least favorite dessert, we'll be going home. The pantry's fully stocked with the finest chocolates and ingredients to create your desserts, and you'll have two hours to complete this challenge. Ready, steady, get your chocolate on. I'm excited about this. Animated films are a lot of fun. They're very colorful. There's lots of whimsy. Kids' movies immediately come to mind. Chocolate, popcorn, candy. I'm making a chocolate semi-fredo cone with candied popcorn. Right. Animated films because they're so playful. So I'm thinking a dropped ice cream cone with all the toppings spreading out from it. So I'm making ice cream only fancy version. Semi-fredo is more like a mousse. It's a lighter texture than an ice cream. <laughs> this is a semi-fredo, not a full fredo. Lights, camera, chocolate. <laughs> it's movie night here at the Great Chocolate Showdown Kitchen. Our bakers have mastered so many techniques. They have complete control to just let their imaginations go wild. So long as it fits in with their movie genre, anything. I love sci-fi movies. It's probably my favorite genre. I go to sleep to like alien TV shows like almost every night. When I hear the phrase sci-fi, I start immediately thinking of spaceships and what desserts I can make look like a spaceship. I'm going for a milfoy. Ooh. That's like a traditional French pastry. I'm making a dark chocolate strawberry mint milfoy. It's a classic dessert, but I want to take it to the future. First, I'm starting with my chocolate sponge. Get my head in the game. I've got musical and one of my favorite opera. I think you know what I'm talking about. 
I'm making a dark chocolate opera cake, and I really want this opera cake to sing. Musicals embellish everything, so I want my buttercream to be as rich as possible. I'm gonna use fresh vanilla bean and a little bit of extract. I'm gonna have layers of dark chocolate genoise, raspberry mousse, and a dark chocolate glaze. Musicals have shiny and glitzy things, and I want my cake to be shiny too. I'm hoping. Kristen feels inspired to work in some. It has to be obvious from their plate what their genre is. This is the mascarpone filling for my tiramisu. My favorite movies are rom-coms and sometimes mystery, but I get the film genre Western. I like the idea of spaghetti Western. So I'm bringing a little Italian inspiration into my dish and making a cocoa and smoked cinnamon dust tiramisu. Okay, Emma is delivering us a tiramisu. Some strong, heavy flavors would suit her dessert with a Western theme. I'm gonna bring out those Western flavors with a smoked cinnamon and a cinnamon whiskey. Let's do this. I got mystery. My gears start going. What can I do to crack a case? I am working on my mousse. Early in this competition, I did a really ugly entremet. I know this wasn't your vision. It came out like meatballs. <laughs> so this is a case of the meatball entremet, the real mystery in entremet. I'm going to try this thing one more time. I'm going to make a dark chocolate entremet with a blackberry jelly and a peanut butter cookie. So it should taste like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ashley really did not do well during the entremet challenge. She wants to redeem herself. Yeah. But will she succeed? Now I'm making a smoked cinnamon chocolate sable crumble. When I think of Western, I think dirt. And sable literally means sandy. It refers to its crumbly tats, a good pairing with my Western themed plated dessert. Mysteries to me are dark and gloomy and mysterious. So I'm making a dark chocolate cloche and I'm going to paint my mold black, purple, and silver. I want for Cynthia to crack the case. Take a mallet and bang on it. And then see this beautiful entremet. Of course, I'm making a mess. Just waiting for this popcorn to pop is stressful, but. One of them popped. So the idea here is that I'm going to pop the popcorn in the colored sugar so that it's fun, it has bright colors, and it reminds me of animated film. Okay. I can smell something burning. Yeah. I finished baking my chocolate sable logs in dirt for my Western campfire. Oh, no. It burnt. I left it in the oven too long. Emma's just burnt a sable. Oh, no. <sighs> Right now, my heart is racing, and the time is ticking. I do not want to go home. Emma's just burnt a sable. Oh, no. My smoked cinnamon sable burnt. I'm going to bake some more. I want these logs on my plate in a campfire position. Luckily, I don't have to restart my dough because I have extra. Let's try this. So for this elimination challenge, we have to make a plated dessert inspired by an iconic movie genre. I'm about to try my hand at some sugar domes to take a mixture of glucose and pour it over these domes. Because it kind of reminds me of like the windows on a spacecraft. I'm working on schedule. At this point, I take my dark chocolate mousse molds out of the freezer and add my blackberry jelly and add more dark chocolate mousse. The pressure's on. Last time I made an entremet, my mousse would not set. But this time, I have to get it to the right temperature. Time is cutting close, and I still have to make mirror glaze. I am on entremet redemption. 30 minutes left. Let's go, guys. We got this. Pace. I'm done my ladyfinger cake. I pipe on some mascarpone filling, shave dark chocolate in between, and then stick them in the fridge so that they can set. 15 minutes left, Bakers. You can do this. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Bakers. It's movie time. This will be like my sand. 
I finished baking my chocolate sable logs and dust. Now it's time to make a spun sugar tumbleweed wisping through the desert in a Western film. I hope the judges take a look at my plate and can tell that I definitely have the film genre Western. 10 minutes to go, bakers. Come on. Come on. The pressure's on. My mousse has been in the freezer for about an hour now. I hope the mousse set firmly. Oh, y'all did not come out with stuff like this. It's firm, it's round, it's pretty, and it's ready for its marigolds. Right, let's try this. I need this to be perfect. My cake is out of the chiller, and it's time to glaze. Hmm, not that bad. Girl, that thing looking good. Thank you. One minute left, bakers. Let's go, y'all. We got this. For my temper chocolate, get these trouble clothes piped out and put on my cake before the final curtain call. Time is running out, but I just have to get everything onto the plate. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Oh. Nice. Good work, Baker. I look at my cake, it looks so shiny, I can see my reflection. I was coming for Anchemay redemption. I hope I cracked the case. Bakers, we asked you to create a plated chocolate dessert inspired by a movie genre. And it's showtime. Tim, please bring us your dessert. The movie genre that I selected was sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So I did my take on a dark chocolate strawberry mint milfoil. The dome, I think, is a wonderful way to take what is a traditional French dessert and give it sci-fi relevance. Tim, the dry ice and the sugar dome brought everything together. This was a spaceship. Your chocolate mousse was full of chocolate flavor. And puff pastry from scratch in the time you were allotted. I think you have impressed all three of us. Did this dessert take me out of this world? Almost. Thank you, judges. I feel OK about my dessert. I mean, there's always a chance you can go home in this kitchen. Mike? I selected animated movies, fun, whimsy. I was picturing a dropped ice cream cone with all the toppings spreading out from it. So I made a chocolate semi-fredo cone with candied popcorn. Brilliant. Thank you. And you have given us some whimsy, a little more color assigned to the actual ice cream in a cone would have helped tie in that playful note. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Mike, if I listen closely, I can hear little children giggling <laughs> on that plate. Lots of color explosions going on. You won me over. Thank you. You nailed the dessert, that semi-fredo. It was silky, it was smooth. Frankly, I would have loved more of that. Thank you. Yes, I have all the elements there, but I'm still worried that it might not be enough. Ashley, please bring us your dessert. I got mystery, so maybe you guys can crack the case. We are looking for a with blackberry jelly and a peanut butter cookie. Last time we seen him, he was a chocolate meatball, but he has changed everything. Well played, Miss <laughs> Ashley. This is a tough <gasps> case. <laughs> that is no chocolate meatball. You've delivered us an entremet and some wonderful precision in that dark and stormy mirror glaze. That is entremet redemption. Ashley, the look of your cloche was shiny. I could see my reflection, your mousse, the intensity of that dark chocolate paired with that peanut butter cookie was so chewy. I lost the blackberry in there because that chocolate was so intense. But you know what? I could eat that all day long. Well done. The mystery has been solved. You have gone from entremets 
to Entre Master. Thank you. You can head back. Emma, please bring us your dessert. I selected the film genre Western. You're gonna have to holster that after you're done. And I made a cocoa and smoked cinnamon dust tiramisu with a meringue campfire. And we have a campfire. That is a very creative animated effect. Your tumbleweed creating a Western theme. Good job. Emma, this was a light and it was very soft and moist, but I got no smokiness from the cinnamon and there was absolutely no chocolate in your dessert. Your chocolate sable was delicious, but because it's a side element, it's not a part of every single bite. Will you be riding off in the sunset or spending another night at the saloon? Thank you. Kristen, please bring us your dessert. I chose musical and I made my version of opera cake. On first looks, I am just drawn by that glaze. Gloriously shiny, it's a classic musical style. This does have an appearance of a more traditional layer cake because the cake layers are thicker. Opera torte sponge is baked thin. Kristen, did you take me to a musical with your presentation? You did. That chocolate detail, nice work. Your sponge was full of chocolate flavor, but a little dry. It was a nice looking plate, but I know you can do better. Thinking about musicals, you could really have taken your imagination way further. That said, your buttercream, delicious. And the raspberry mousse, which was so delicious, wasn't that? Why did they add another layer? If you'd had another layout, layout, I mean, shouted, encore, encore. But whether we get to hear you sing again, I don't know. Bakers, we asked you for a sweet night at the movies by creating a dessert based on a film genre. Some of you produce plates with cinematic design and blockbuster flavor. But unfortunately, a few of your desserts were far from a critic's choice. When I call your name, please step forward. Mike. You? Please step to the side. Tim and Ashley, please step forward. Congratulations. The two of you had our favorite desserts of this challenge. But there was one baker who created a dessert that was an absolute showstopper. And that dessert belongs to... Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Ashley. There's no mystery to us. Your creativity, flavor, and execution all deserve awards. Case closed. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Kristen and Emma, unfortunately, your desserts were not as successful. Emma, your Western tiramisu, it was moist and delicious. However, chocolate was supposed to have a starring role, and it was completely missing. If you continue in this kitchen, never be a background player in your desserts again. Kristen, chocolate was the star of your musical and the ensemble cast. But both the texture and execution of your opera cake fell flat. Kristen, if you continue in this competition, we need to see your execution improve or we won't want to see a sequel. Unfortunately, one of you must leave this kitchen. The baker who is going home is... Emma. That means, Kristen, you are safe. You may join the others. 
It's very sad to see other bakers leave because we're all grown to love each other. Emma, we have adored watching your creativity flourish in this kitchen. You have continually pushed yourself and the results have been truly delightful. You are early in your baking career, but we already see the skill and attention to detail of a seasoned baker. Everyone, please come say goodbye to Emma. Don't miss you, Lee. Notice. I'm feeling really accomplished and I have so many new skills, tips and tricks now that I've been here. Everybody is so talented, but I cannot wait to go home and hug my family. I miss them so much. Next time on Great Chocolate Showdown, the final four bake in the semifinal. Finish strong, yeah. Tensions are high when trifles become troubling. Oh, he's falling apart. I will be blunt. I don't see a jungle. And a cake chandelier challenge has one baker's finale ring in the balance. I do not want to go home.
Find our way. 